Hey folks, welcome back to Abundant Life Homestead. Today we're working on continuing our series of maintenance on the Kubota B7100 HSTD and today we're going to change the hydraulic oil. Now the hydraulic oil plays a lot of critical roles in this tractor. Not only does it run your transmission, runs your transfer case for your front wheels, runs both your rear and your mid PTO, runs your implement lift off your three point hitch, and it runs the hydraulics for your bucket. So kind of vitally important we keep it uh, squared away and up to date. Let's go have a seat and talk about it first before we get to the work. Okay, so by the manual, you're supposed to change the hydraulic oil, the hydraulic oil filter and clean the strainers every 200 hours of operation. Now, if you're like me, you don't always hit those as exact deadlines. I put about 200 hours a year on my tractor. I will change my filter once a year, so it's pretty much on schedule, but I only change my fluid every two to three years. and. Uh, Honestly, I've never cleaned the strainers out because I've never decided to tackle taking off the uh, backhoe subframe, but we just did that a little bit ago and we're going to get to those strainers today. I'm kind of expecting them to be in bad shape after several years of not being changed, but uh, we'll see when we get to that part. <coughs> so some stuff we need. Uh, when it comes to hydraulic oil, the thing to be prepared for is this system takes 3.6 gallons of hydraulic oil. That's if you have the HSTD. Um, the other systems, uh, the two-wheel drive hydrostats and the, uh, the manual transmissions, they, they have lower, lower uh, amounts needed. But for the HSTD, you need 3.6 gallons. So you got to make sure you have the fluid and also make sure you have somewhere to put it. Now the fluid we use, uh, Kubota gives us a list here. Okay, Kubota UDT, Shell Dyna, Dyno X T, TD or TM, Mobile Fluid 350, Exxon Torque Fluid 56, or suitable equivalents. Uh, what I get locally in five gallon pails is this right here. I get it Royal King, it's a Providence Pre Premium Trans Hydraulic Oil, and you could go through the entire list, but on the back it does meet the uh, all the specs of Kubota UDT and Super UDT, so I know some uh, purists will say Kubota Fluid only. These Everybody's got to be pretty strict on, on meeting specs. This meets Kubota specs. We're good to put it in there. I've always put it in there. But you make sure you got something to drain your 3.6 gallons into. Most drain pans aren't going to hold that much, so I've got a drain pan, and then I've got an empty coffee can to catch while I pour the drain pan into a bucket. Seems to work pretty well. A few other things we're going to need. We need a filter. Um, I know Wix filters work well. I don't remember what I have on there right now. This time, since I had to order a bunch of parts off of Kubota, I went ahead and got a Kubota filter. For this model, the hydrostat filter that you need is HH660-36060. A few other things we need for the uh, <coughs> drive case. <coughs> for the drive case drain plug, we have a gasket to put back on it. 04717-01600 for the uh, rear differential drain plugs there's two of them we need a gasket for each one 04717-01200 for the hydraulic screens right hand is going to have two o-rings 04811-10300 and for the left hand 04811-10400 and you can start to see as parts add up that uh, there's a reason this doesn't always get done on schedule but uh, like I say after after a few years several years we do need to get to those screens we're going to make sure we get it done this year now you're going to find out here shortly that I tried to start this job using the uh, standard equivalent near equivalent for the uh, larger two of the metric sizes 
It worked in one case, it didn't in the other. So I ran to town, I ran down a uh, socket set of the right size, happened to find a pawn shop because no stores carried them. So here's the tools you actually need for this job in the order that you need them. So for your drive case drain plug, 22 millimeter socket. For your rear differential or axle case drain plugs, there's two of them. You need a 17 millimeter socket. For your uh, pickup strainers, one on each side, they each take a 26 millimeter socket. You want a pick to pick out your uh, O-rings on your pickup tubes. There's two on each side. And just a regular old uh, filter wrench. That'll get you by. That's the tools you need. So the first thing I'm going to do, same we do with any oil type change, I'm going to start up the engine, I'm going to let everything get up to uh, normal operating temperature. Get, get, to get your transmission good and warmed up, if it's sitting in neutral and not doing anything, you need about 10 minutes of run time to really get all that fluid up through there and get everything warmed up. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to pull off this tunnel cover. There's a thumb screw here and here and matching thumb screws on each side. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off while it's running. That's where we're going to access our hydraulic filter. Okay, starting to feel a little bit of warmth in the filter. That's good enough, that's all we need. We just want that oil to start loosening up a little bit, get warm enough to flow out the drain plugs. Now we're gonna come over here, we're gonna take a look at those drain plugs. And before we get to the drain plugs, we're gonna pull off our filler cap right here. Twist it off. and our dipstick right here. That'll just help everything breathe while we're, uh, while we're draining it out. Okay, underneath the tractor, this is where the fun begins. Right here, we've got our front PTO drain plug right here. This is where we're gonna start. This needs a uh, 22 millimeter or about seven eighths inch wrench. It's going to take a while to drain, so I may not show the whole thing. Said so this this whole system carries 3.6 gallons of fluid, and it's going to go quick. Oh, this is the fun part. Yep. Get this dumped in the bucket.
Now all 3.6 gallons won't come out of here. This is the first of three drain plugs that we pull. The other two do sit a little lower and further back, so we'll keep the pan here till this stops draining. Okay, we're down to pretty slow on this one. I'm going to put my coffee can under it so that we can move on. Get this dumped into the bucket. I definitely got a little metal flake in the pan, but so that's to be expected. Okay, so this next, these next drain plugs may be very hard to get a get a focus on. What I'm going for is going for the bolt directly below directly below the axle on the differential here. And that's going to take a 17 millimeter. And I'll have to get the camera out of the way so I can get in there and loosen that up. We're going to pull that, we're going to drain it. <laughs> the pan barely catches that. Come out so hard it just about hit the tire. Did spill a little bit back there. I've seen some chunks come out of that. Oh yeah, that's filthy. Now because I've never got to the drain screens, I've also never never emptied out the, at the rear differential, so there's probably some buildup in there. Only thing I've ever pulled was the uh, drive case drain plug change the filter, filled it back up. There's probably a lot of sediment down in there from the years. But we're getting it taken care of now. Still dripping at the drive case. We're going to let both these sit for a little while and then uh, we'll go grab the other side once one of these is done. Okay, so as you can probably tell, we're starting to run out of daylight. I did not realize it was getting so late. So, these are down to a slow drip. I'm going to put these plugs back in. We're going to go ahead and we're going to drain the right side before dark. And we'll come back in the morning. Open these plugs back up, pick up anything that settled overnight, and get back to it. Okay, on the right hand side, same deal. It's going to be a little hard to see, but if we can see it. Back here, the uh, where I got the laser pointer, the, the bolt directly under the axle is the drain plug bolt. we got to remove it. 17 millimeter. Turn. Get ready to catch this because it the other side really comes flying out of there. Alright. Getting some of that thick thick cruddy stuff out of there. But like I said, we're running out of daylight. I'm going to put these back on. Let's keep this hydraulic system sealed up. I'm going to put all of the, uh, put all the drain plugs back in, put the filler cap in, put the dipstick in, and we will pick up at this point first thing in the morning. 
Okay, picking up where we left off. It got very windy out here, so I've attempted to uh, set up a wind block behind the tractor. Hopefully that takes care of the noise. We're going to pull these plugs, pick up anything that drained overnight, and then we'll get started up top. Remember these are 17 millimeter head and it's the bolt that is directly below the axle on each side. And when you get it off you can tell because it's got it's got the rubber and copper gasket on it. That sludge coming out, that, that's what I'm afraid of. I know I haven't done this this job in since I've had the tractor for more than 10 years and it's unfortunate that I didn't realize how easy it was to get the subframe off I didn't realize how easy it was to get the subframe off and actually get to this area I would have done it more often but I kind of get the feeling that none of the uh, previous owners did it either. And there's some pretty thick sludge in here. So I'm going to have to make this a priority the next couple of years. Getting that good and cleaned out. Likewise, we'll get this uh, drive case plug off of here. This was about a 22 millimeter. I don't have a 22 millimeter socket, but I used a 7 8. It was tight enough that it didn't mar anything. Uh, we picked up quite a bit there. And we'll let all that drain for a little while. Now the next thing we're going to get to is our pickup screens. On the V7100 HSTD there are two pickup screens. On each side of the transmission you see this, that, uh, this area here that kind of bulges out and then has a big knot on it. Same thing down under your levers under here. There's pickup tubes, there's a screen in the end of each one of those. We got to pull them both out. Now these, the nuts on these, or the bolts on these will measure out to about a 28 or 29 millimeter metric. Everything's on metric on this tractor, but I don't have a wrench or socket that size. I've got a 1 and 1 16th inch combination wrench. It's pretty tight on there. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. I should be able to get these. Okay, this one might be tougher than me at the moment. Alright, I don't want to risk damaging that yet. Oh heck, that one's going to be loose. Look at that. It's the other side that is going to give us a big problem. It's tight. I'm suspecting it's not meant to be that tight. It means it's probably going to be in bad shape in there. And if it is, it's my own fault. I've already planned on the fact that I may have to order new screens. But we'll see what they look like once we get them out of here. Huh. 
Alright, here we loosen up. See what she looks like here. Oh, not too cruddy, but a whole lot of little metal particles. Which I kind of expected. Now the way we're going to clean these screens, like many other things that we clean off the tractors, with the magic of kerosene. I've got some old kerosene here, pouring a coffee can. Good. Probably more than enough. And that's kerosene to get condensation in it, so... I use it for stuff like this, and then I'll turn around and use it for starting brush piles, firing them up. I put the screen down in the kerosene, just gently swirl it around. And that screen starts, starts releasing most of those particles that are sticking to it. And I don't know why this works so well with kerosene and not diesel fuel, but maybe one day I'll learn. Okay, so not wanting to damage that uh, pickup screen any more than I already had with the wrench I went back and measured it with the calipers and uh, I must have read it wrong the first time I think I said 28 and it was actually 26 it was a pretty tight 26 so uh, no wonder the one in 1 16th didn't didn't quite grab onto it it'll it'll grab a 27 millimeter but not a 26 so I ran into town find a 26 millimeter socket thank God for a local pawn shop one of the joys of being in a small town is uh, none of the auto parts stores or tool stores in town carried 26 millimeter sockets. None of them were even available for ship to store. But I found one at the pawn shop. So we're going to put this on there. We're going to get that other screen off. And then uh, I'll, go, I'll figure out how to go back and edit the sizes at the beginning of the video. Okay, 26 millimeter socket going on the pickup screen. See if we can get her budge. Oh goodness. Where my cheater bar? I broke it loose, but I smacked my face up against the engine too, so that's why I turn around and do things like read my calipers wrong. Better get the bucket under here. kind of shape this one's in. Hmm. Pretty much the same way, no sludge, but it's got a few decades of metal flake on it. We'll go clean that off in the kerosene as well. My smaller pickup screen's been down in here for a while. 
looks like pretty much everything's come loose from that cut off a little flake still on there no big deal set it off the side now this side's a finer mesh I believe yeah according to the manual this is a 38-150 mesh and the others a or this is a 46-150 and the smaller one there is a 38 to 60 but the other one dropped more after leaving it so we'll leave that for a while and uh, dry my hands off here and we'll switch to the filter come back to these and start putting everything back together Goodness. There we go. The filter took the stud that it mounts to with it. That's okay. His, uh, part of your service is to check that stud and then tighten it back up I guess that does allow for that filter to come off one way or another which is good couple of nicks on the side of this. I don't know how those got there. Doesn't look like it'd be enough to mess with the seal any. Take our new filter. Just like the oil. Rub a little bit of this hydraulic oil on it. On the ring. Spin her on here. Keep it hand tight. We want to go about a quarter turn. Just about a quarter turn past hand tight. Okay, that's pretty well clean. Some of that sparkle is baffles underneath it. drip dry a little bit now as we start putting pieces back together this is where all those small parts I went through in the beginning of the video come into play uh, a right hand a right hand pickup screen or pickup strainer is clean and <clears throat> clean and ready so uh, we'll go ahead and install it we need the two O-rings for it. Those are 04811-10300. Takes two of them and they both go on the piece that's still at, at the tractor. We'll go over there and show you that. Okay, there's an O-ring in, in each side of this pickup. That one's pretty easy to pull out. You got one that's going to be kind of blind to get into. Oh, dropped it. That's fine. Back on this inside, put 
Let's set new O-ring in. This is something I'm going to have to get used to doing every year. Because anytime you pull those screens out, you want to go ahead and change that rubber. pickup tube or a strainer slowly make our way back in the hole try not to damage it now I looked and looked in the uh, service manual and in the workshop manual and I did not find Torque specs, torque specs for reinstalling these. I really wish they would have included such numbers. Let's see if we can get this even thread up in here. So I'll start there. If I find a torque spec for them later, we'll make sure we've got them torqued right. Okay, same thing on the left hand side of the engine. Except we got the uh, O ring 04811 The outside O ring already came out with the. Uh, With the strainer, looks like the inside o-ring is actually stuck in the hole, not in the pickup tube. Yep. All right. Now that actually doesn't look incredibly healthy. We're gonna clean that up a little bit before we. Yep. I'm gonna take something a little more harsh on that. I think because. It's got some corrosion on it where there's been a little more space than there should have been. Probably had some moisture in it. And that's probably a big part of why it was so hard to get off there. This is one of those parts that's not so fun because you don't want to leave this here. But you also don't want to introduce any more particulate into the uh, hydraulic system. We've got enough of that problem on our own. Let's see if we can get some of this off of here. Some discoloration on this side, but it, uh, it's no longer raised up. Smooth enough for a gasket, anyway. Okay, now we press our O rings in.
the other hand. Okay, so I went back through the workshop manual just to check, and nowhere, including in the uh, section for overhauling the hydraulics and transmission, nowhere did they give torque specs for those pickup tubes or these drain plugs. So, None of them are under pressure, so I guess it doesn't matter too terribly much as long as they're tight enough they're not leaking. You don't want them too incredibly tight, especially when they got rubber gaskets in them. But we're going to go ahead and put plugs back in. This one on your drive case. Now that I have the correct size sockets, this is a 22 millimeter. Oh, by the way, on the drive case, we used our gasket 04717-01600 and on the rear differential each side we're using these gaskets 04717-01200 and these gaskets are basically copper washer with a rubber grommet infused through in the middle of them. And these in the rear 
differential or 17 millimeter. Feels good. All right, we'll clean up our tools and get ready to add fluid. Okay, time to start re-adding the fluid. Six or 3.6 gallons through a small hole. We've got a long way to go. But we'll get there. And this five gallon jug is a bit much for me to lift almost chest high. At least for the first couple gallons, I'm going to pour some into my uh, kerosene clean coffee can. Pour it down in there. So I get some weight off the bucket. If I was smart, I'd remove the dipstick, give the air a place to go. Just getting to the edge of the dipstick. So hard to tell when you got fresh fluid if you're up on the dip on the dipstick or not. Right, we can take it here. Yep, I'm getting getting fluid just above the fill mark. That's where we want it. Okay, now once you get your fluid in here. Even if all you do is change your fluid at the front drive case and change your filter like I used to do, it is imperative that you let the engine run no more than half throttle, no load, don't go anywhere, leave it sitting idle for 10 to 20 minutes as it works the new fluid through, works the air bubbles out. I don't know if you could get away with just jumping on it and taking off, but uh, they say it's imperative to prevent the damage, so that's what I've always done. We're going to start this up, let it run a good 20 minutes, do our final checks, and then we'll be done. Okay, gave it a full 20 minutes of run time. I slid some cardboard underneath to make sure we didn't have any new drips, and we don't. I'm going to check the fluid. Yep. Yeah. 
Now your filler tube and your dipstick tube are just about the same height. What I just did was stick my dipstick down in the filler tube just to get an eyeball how much we needed and it uh, looks like that run time dropped it about an inch. It's going to be real close through the dipstick hole. Yep, we're right on it. Good deal. Now just for assurance, I think I'm going to fire it up again. Let it run a few minutes, but you know the drill from there. Well, there you have it, folks. Maintenance of the hydraulic system. And uh, under any normal circumstance, I'd put my tunnel cover back on, but I've got some other work to do in here, so I'm going to leave it off for today. Otherwise, we're done with this job but got quite a bit more maintenance to do and my list is growing as I get into things um, here shortly I'm going to be taking off my cruise control we're going to service our steering box still got some electrical work to do still got to put the uh, subframe back on for the backhoe a few other little things here and there say I got a little list started up so if you want to uh, keep up to date with that or any other goings on out here at our little homestead, make sure you uh, subscribe to our channel. We appreciate it. And any likes and comments you provide, we appreciate that too. And I'll try to get back with you on any comments you make. But um, until next time, just keep on nourishing your dreams, cultivating your passions, embracing the beauty of God's creation. We'll see you then. Thank you again. We hope you have a blessed day.